where do you uh, discover the cohesion? How do you promote that cohesion within the society so that they don't go the Rwandan way, where you who can work on development, on health, uh, on education, but if you forget that the people who are being educated, the people who are being provided with development, have do, must to have a relationship that we need to pay attention on. And if you don't pay attention to that relationship, then all the development work, the good development work can be destroyed, like it did in, in, in the case of Rwanda and many other places. And hence, uh, thinking about the human person and placing the human person at the center of the work, and these waves of relationship that needs to be sustained, to be nurtured, repaired when they are broken, is so essential as just working on development, on human rights and institution building. If I'm focused on peace building without paying attention to development work, without paying attention to respect of human rights, without paying attention to water sanitation and any other things that brings um, uh, an abundant life to a human person and an environment that is created for a human person to, to put to friction the potential that uh, he has or she has. If you don't think about those multiple assets that a human person have, then we need to, we, that's the problem we had when the Rwandan genocide took place. We did not pay much attention previously to the human relationship. And we, we are now seeing the consequences. So we need to have a holistic understanding of a human person. And to allow the organization to embrace these multiple facets of a human person, we develop a, a framework that is called the Integral Human Development Framework. And that understands that every human person have assets of different kinds. They can be political assets that allow you to vote and, and select who will lead you. We have natural assets, your environment and whatever the, the earth and the environment is offering you. Your financial asset, your bank account is fat or thin and it's part of your assets. Your social asset, your network of friendship, your family, the relationship that you create with your colleagues uh, at workplace, your club, your football club, <laughs> all that constitutes your assets. And any system in the same society, any institution in the same society, objective would be to increase those assets so that a human person can live a full life, an abundant life that, that addresses uh, all his needs, his basic needs, and also various needs that the person has including actualization. So creating those assets and understanding that institutions and systems exist in the society, the more assets you have, the more influence you have on institutions and, and, and systems. And the more responsive the system is, the more closer it, ha it is on the people. And then you reduce, or you, you reduce the distance between the people needs and the institution's response to their needs and then you create condition for what we may call now real democracy. <clears throat> because people have a say, and their say has a hearing from the leaders. You have reduced their distance between the two. But where the distance is too far apart, that's where we have uh, a lot of conflicts, and that's where we have dissatisfaction. That's where we have illegitimate governments that operate in its own sphere in total disconnect with the needs of the people. So in other words, the government can become predatory because it is depleting the assets of the people rather than increasing uh, those assets. And so uh, by understanding this uh, in a holistic way where assets are promoted by the institutions, by the systems in the society, invite therefore people to look at these institutions and society and make them as accountable, as transparent, as democratic as possible and reduce therefore the distance between the leaders and the people and creating a capacity for greater legitimacy for them.